Okay, here we are. Welcome to a new episode of What's New in History. Pretty soon, I think we're going to have an intro because the fabulous Lily Mayo is going to record one for us, and then we'll have an intro to What's New in History. All right, so what are we talking about today? We have an article from Smithsonian Magazine called Elusive Yeast That Gave Rise to Loggers Found in Europe for the First Time. So here's, oh, this is by Sarah Kuta, K-U-T-A, who's a daily correspondent from the Smithsonian Magazine, and it's dated December 22, 2022. Uh, so a group of undergraduate students from University College in Dublin, Ireland, have found the ancestral yeast strain that helped create lager-style beers, and this is the first time that it has been identified in Europe. This strain is called, you ready, Saccharomyces eubianus. And it is one of the two parent species that make the hybrid yeast that brewers now use to make lagers. And they found it in the soil of their campus. And the details of this find is in the journal FEMS Yeast Research. Uh, yes. There is a journal of yeast research. I will put the link in the show notes, and I will tell you I read the paper, and it starts off pretty interesting, and then it gets very detailed. So if you know much about yeast DNA, you'll love this link. Otherwise, you'll probably just get through the first third of it like me. Anyway, um, actually humans, because there is, you know, there, there maybe there's a journal of yeast research because we use a lot of yeast in the world. We use it for bread. But we also use it for brewing beer, and humans have a long history with brewing. Uh, in fact, the first evidence of a fermented beer, we'll call it in air quotes, is from Israel 13,000 years ago. So that's 11,000 B.C. And then again, sometime in China around 7,000 B.C. So let's talk a little bit about these before we get to our yeast find. And I promise we're not going to get into any yeast DNA. If you're into that, you're going to have to check out the article from the FEMS Yeast Research Magazine. Anyway, so we have archaeological evidence of fermentation in the residence of a beer with the consistency of gruel used by the Natufians for ritual feasting in the Carmel Mountains in Israel. Now, um, the Natufians are interesting. They're super interesting, actually. They're a semi-nomadic people, and they lived in the Levant starting around 13,000 B.C. These guys made bread. They traded with people from Anatolia to Egypt. Um, remember, Anatolia is modern Turkey. The Levant is modern Israel and Lebanon. These, you could make, these are like proto-farmers, proto uh, Neolithic people, you know, they're, they were hunter-gatherers, but they some semi-nomadic, meaning they did have some houses that they, that they lived in, settlements, that kind of thing. So super interesting. And they were brewing beer. So like I said, this beer would have been like a gruel and not a drink. So, I, you know, if you saw if a Natufian came and saw us today, he'd be like, you kids today with your fancy liquid beer? In my day, we had to chew our beer. So people did whatever they had to do to get beer. So now scholars, of course, are not 100% sure they consciously fermented it. I mean, how could you be sure what anybody consciously did 13,000 years ago? Um, but, I mean, I vote they did because, seriously, people like beer. It, we have a lot of evidence of beer. I mean, you figure out, you leave it out, and it gets funky, and it becomes fermented. And you figure out how to do that. So now this time is before you know, 13,000 years ago, 11,000 B.C. This is even before pre-pottery Neolithic period. So that means no pottery. So I wondered, what did they put their chewy beer in? Like stone cups? And yes, they put them in stone drinking vessels slash bowls. They were made of limestone, because that's very much easier to carve, but it's still strong enough to do the trick of holding up your gruel beer. If you just think of like Fred Flintstone drinking beer out of rocks, <laughs> not of stone cups, and him and Barney are bowling also with rocks. So at this point in history, 
and probably for thousands and thousands and thousands of years after, beer was mm, for ritual purposes. It wasn't like there was a giant brewery where you can, you know, just go and buy a six pack. Um, and quite probably was used during funerals, which is also the start of a long tradition of having drinks after a funeral or a wake. That's what we do here in Scranton, PA, anyway. I mean, <laughs> maybe the first serial killer was an alcoholic. He was just offing pe- people so he can go to the funerals. But seriously, this is at this time, like I said, it wasn't easy to brew beer, and so it was used for ritual purposes. And you know, you didn't understand what was happening to you when you drank this beer. It just you know, it was a gift from the gods. This euphoric feeling. So moving on, I said we found beer in China a long time ago too, and they did, 9,000 years ago. And so this is um, around 7,000 BC, and this is a relatively recent find too. So it's sort of new in history as well. It's definitely new because this was from a find in 2021 in southeast China in the Zhehong province. So archaeologists digging out a grave site found the remnants of alcoholic beverages in pottery vessels near the bodies, next to the bodies, right by the bodies. And this was pottery. So um, this particular brew was made with rice, Job's tears, which is a kind of barley, and some unidentified tubers. So like tubers are a root vegetable, something like potatoes. But these wouldn't be potatoes because potatoes come from the New World, from the Americas. So that's kind of interesting. Never thought you'd use tubers to to make a brew, but you could pretty much use anything. Um, and then there's evidence that there was rice husks as well in the mix. So the researchers think they probably became moldy, which was how they were able to ferment the mixture into beer. So today we use yeast, which is what we're talking about in this episode. And But most likely here in China, they use moldy rice husks. Mmm, yummy. All right. <laughs> so... Um, now, this would not be like anything like an IPA you drink today. For one thing, they didn't use hops. That's what makes IPAs so bitter and taste so absolutely horrible. I know. A lot of people like IPAs. I don't consider myself not a connoisseur. I love beer. I love wine. Just don't like really bitter IPAs. Sorry, Christy. I know you like them. But um, this beer was probably slightly alcoholic. Sweet tasting and cloudy, not like an IPA. You know, it's just um, not as bitter. And um, I probably like it. Slightly alcoholic, too. Oh, you know what? This is a good point. To While we're on the topic of ancient beer, I'm going to give a shout out to Aram, Aram Hosho. And he is a good friend of the podcast, fan of history, and what's new in history, I think then he is almost finished with a really cool cookbook, which is based on the written records from ancient Mesopotamia. It's called Table of Gods, and it's um, it is really cool. I um, Christy and I actually made a, got a recipe from Aram, and we did it in the kitchen. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, we made the recipe. This is a family show. I mean, gosh, we made the recipe in the kitchen. It was called Nana's Moon Bread. And I thought, well, you know, it's probably going to be, you know, not taste that great or whatever. Oh, my God, it was fantastic. And we had so much fun making it. So definitely check out. It's tableofgods.com. You could pre-order the book, I believe, on there. You could definitely get on the waiting list. And if you do that, you'll get a bunch of the free recipes. There's vegetarian recipes like I eat, and there's also meat recipes. And um, I'll put a link in the show notes. It's a really cool book. And, you know, there was, I watched a, um, a really cool video on YouTube where a guy made some cloudy Sumerian beer because the Sumerians were definitely brewing beer. We have written records of them from, like, you know, 3,000 B.C., and I'd love to try it. So, you know, how about a beer recipe in there, Aram? Okay, that is that. Oh, one last thing, one last thing, sorry, one last thing about the China beer find. This beer, right, was found in pottery, like I said before, not in cups made out of rocks. But how about this? This is now one of the oldest, if not the oldest, painted pottery found at anywhere in the world. So this find with beer <laughs> was the oldest painted pottery found anywhere in the world. And obviously, there was some pottery that wasn't painted, but they felt like painting these was more important. And beer is important. In fact, I was having a hard time not drinking beer while I'm recording this now. Maybe I'll have one after. <laughs> 
My neighbor John, lovely, amazing human being that he is, is always stopping by my house with different beers for me to taste. And thank God he never brings me a gruel one, but I'm now I definitely have a hankering for beer. So after we all finish this episode, anyone who could drink beer, we should have a beer. All right. So bringing up John again, like he brings me beer, and the Natufians chewing and drinking their beer 13,000 years ago, the beer in China was definitely, almost certainly, for social slash ritual purposes because the vessels were absolutely found in the context of a burial. So beer drinking ritualistic purposes thousands of years ago. I mean, I guess going to a bar and watching your favorite team play American football or what you Europeans call football, soccer. (laughs) Anyway, when you go to a bar and watch a game, that's like ritualist too, I guess. Okay. Back to our lager yeast. As we just learned, beer could be made with mold, and you could even use spit to make hooch like they do in prisons. But yeast is a lot better. So, and today, that's all we use. I mean, maybe there's some obscure beers that use something besides yeast, but I'm not aware of them. So, today, yeast is essential to the brewing process. And the brewing process relies on fermentation, to transform water, grains, hops, into that delicious, bubbly, alcoholic beverage known as beer. So basically, how you make beer is you get barley. Let's just say we're making today, we're using barley. You get barley, and you call it malted barley because you heat it a little. You heat it to release some some more of the sugars. If you heat it a little, it's more light colored. If you heat it a lot, It's dark, like a stout, and more sweet, more sugars come out. So then you put the malted barley in some water, and you heat it up. You don't quite boil it, I don't think. Maybe you boil a little. It's got to stay at a certain temperature. I've made beer before, but it was a long time ago. So you boil it, you heat it, you release the sugars into the water, and then you would spice it. That's when you put the the hops in it to balance the sweetness. And our ancient people would have put different kinds of spices in it, different kinds of different all kind of herbs and things to balance out the maltiness. And sometimes they wouldn't have, and it would have been a malty, alcoholic beer. Um, So then then after you have that all ready, you put the yeast in or something to ferment. So today we would put the yeast in. And then the yeast eats the sugars, and the waste product of the yeast is the alcohol. So it ferments for, you know, so many days, and then you leave it till it ages, and then you have a delicious beer. In the old days... It was gruelly beer, but it still got the trick done if you wanted to see God at a funeral. So what is the difference between a lager and an ale? It's the type of yeast that makes the difference. And so the basic difference is how they're fermented, different kinds of yeast. That's the topic we're talking about here. Um, So ales are fermented with a top fermenting yeast at warm temperatures, 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Lagers, on the other hand, are fermented with bottom fermenting yeast at colder temperatures, 35 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 2 to 10 degrees Celsius. Um, Because of their warm fermentations, ales generally ferment and age in a shorter period of time, like three to five weeks, and you could drink in your ale. Lagers take longer to ferment and age up to six to eight weeks, and they're done in a cold. So the discovery of this yeast in Ireland helped solve a mystery that has stumped scientists for years because researchers first detected the um, S. eubianus yeast in the South American Patagonian Andes in 2011, then in North America, then China, Tibet, and New Zealand, but they never identified it in Europe and despite the fact that lagers most likely originated in Bavaria, in Germany, in Europe, toward the end of the Middle Ages. And the timing is there's a good chance that our elusive yeast hitched a ride from the New World to the Old World with the Spanish colonists and conquistadores. Quote from the article, It really did feel like Europe was somewhat of a missing link, where it seems like S. eubianus should be there says Quinn Langdon, a biologist at Sanford University who was not involved in the project. 
So today, lagers are the most popular beer style in the world. That represents more than 90% of all beers sold. So your basic beer, your Budweiser, your Coors Light, your Heineken, your Amstel, you know, your basic beers are usually lagers. You know, the craft beers, the ales are coming back. Personally, I do like an ale taste better. But um, this was not always the case. Um, lagers are definitely relatively new, like we said, probably sometime at the end of the Middle Ages. In Europe, because in Europe, the brewers specialize in making ales, and they use a different, very hard to pronounce, but I'm not going to even try, strain, but we know it as brewer's yeast. But then in 1516, in Bavaria, their leaders instituted new rules known today as the German P Beer Purity Law. And that's actually still in effect today. And it's the oldest surviving law in the world involving food and drink. You may have heard of it. That's so all beer in Germany have to go by the beer, German Beer Purity Law. And it was enacted to establish consistent quality and also to eliminate dangerous experimentation. So the law required that only water, malted barley, and hops were allowed to be used in brewing. Brewing. <laughs> Yeast, too, of course. But also, in addition to, the, to that, which you may have heard about, part of the law, it also limited beer making to the cold winter months. And that's so to make it safer. Obviously, beer was probably getting people sick and killing people, not just from drinking too much because, you know, you're playing with, you know, it's a science. It's an art and a science. You're basically spoiling, you know, spoiling it by, you know, getting yeast in it. You don't get yeast in all your other foods that you eat, but, you know, it, it ferments it the right way and you have that glorious thing that is beer. But it was safer to make in the winter months, so that was the law was enacted. So when beer makers shifted from brewing during the warmer months to the colder ones, the brewer's yeast alone didn't work as well. So what they did was combine it with our yeast S. ubianus, and that became the one that brewers used. And so they changed their focus from ales to lagers. Voila. And now that scientists and those students in Ireland have discovered S. ubianus in Irish soil, they hope to eventually partner with the brewery and try their hands at using the yeast to make a brew in honor of this find, to celebrate it. And they say the beer may not taste great because S. ubianus by itself isn't really ideal for brewing a good beer, but... The researchers say it would be a fun experiment nonetheless. And I'm pretty sure it will not be chewable. So that is our episode for today. I am going to open myself a beer. And cheers, everyone. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash fanofhistory. Just a dollar an episode would help us out. Thanks, and see you next time.